Guys, we are back here with the semifinals of Go Gear For Four Heroes America Cup number five. Five? Four? One full hand. One, one full, full hand. hand. One full hand. One right. Full Two hand. hands. No good. Two one hand. Hands, good. One full All right. Hand. Awesome. I'm solid, Jake. <laughs> I'm Kubi. And uh, again, this is semifinals. It's going to be clairvoyant. Again, big upsets. Taking out yeah. Glorious and EG. They're on a tear. Yeah, they are on a tear. Uh, Cursed Hollow, all three games. Mm -hmm. uh, this Well, this is going to yeah. be Cursed Hollow. So yeah, we're going to see another game on Cursed Hollow. And that's really no surprise. It's a very, very neutral map. At least it's considered that way between a lot of the top teams right now. It, you know, People don't want to take a, r a big risk in a, a best of one series. So they're going to try and grab the most neutral map. I'm right. sure you know, not as exciting for you guys because you're seeing pretty much the same map played on every game. But yeah. I'm sure we'll see some diversity in the finals when it moves over to a best of three. So uh, hang tight for that. That said, Cursed Hollow once again. And I think those guys are ready for the draft. So yep. those guys being Cloud9 Vortex and Clairvoyant Gaming. So. Yeah, and just just to plug, uh, Zoya will be streaming the other semifinals. That's right. There's yes, going to be Symbio absolutely. Gaming versus I think Barrel it's Barrel Boys. Boys. Yes. Barrel Boys. Yeah, yep. yeah. So again, these are the semifinals. These are the last two matches before the grand finals, mm -hmm. which will likely be on the stream. I'm pretty pretty certain it will be us um, for the grand finals. Right. But we'll, we'll figure that out when we get sure. there. But like you said, yeah, we got a draft to look at. Let's do it. Well, we got Clairvoyant here on the left and Cloud9 on the right. Uh, the bands have begun, and the first band coming out of Clairvoyant is actually going to be Tassadar. They don't like Tassadar. They really don't. They say, screw that guy. <laughs> we, we did a weird build with him. We don't huh. want to do that again. Actually, the bands are very similar to EG versus Clairvoyant. EG also banned out Falstead versus... Uh, Falstead, yeah, Falstead versus Clairvoyant. I'm not sure if there's somebody I'm, I'm not aware of on... Clairvoyant gaming that's particularly good with False Dead that I, uh, maybe I'm not aware of something. It's entirely possible. Banning out False Dead is a bit interesting. Banning out Tassadar also interesting. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, we were a little bit perplexed by it at the time. I mean, it, there is the point to make that Tassadar is pretty. He's very versatile, especially on Cursed Hollow. He gets you that extra vision of the, of the the tributes. You know where you're going to be fighting. And you also have that extra range to just harass with the size storms. You know, delay that tribute being taken. It's a pretty solid pick. Again, I'm not sure if it's worth a ban. Uh, we'll have to just see where the rest of it goes. I liked when they banned out Stitches. I thought that made a lot of sense. Their tool also makes sense so that you just don't have to deal with uh, him taking golems from you. Uh, you know, with the Void Prison, just hop onto it and cap it. Those are those those things make a lot of sense to me. Tassadar, I'm just not sure if it's worth a ban. But that said, moving in, uh, we have a Voloff picked up first from Clairvoyant Gaming, followed up by a Witch Doctor Tychus, and then a Stitches Zero Tool counterpicked. By Clairvoyant Game. God, Witch Doctor Tychus as your as your first two heroes is like such a a, a power play. It's like it's it's so and, and especially at Cursed Hollow, we can see Witch Doctor get so much use, and Tychus arguably considered to be the best ranged assassin in the game right now. Um, of course, that's always debatable. False that's a lot of damage. Bala, very good. Nazebo is very good. Yep. But uh, that like oh and th wow, they're just going in. They're just going in. They pick up Hammer and is this real? Hammer Arthas? That is well? that's that's real. Who's going to be playing Hammer? It looks like I Dream right now is currently hovering over the Hammer. That's the uh it's not the master skin. I don't think. I think it's the second skin. Yeah. But uh okay, that's also a little bit strange, the Hammer. It would make a lot more sense to see Hammer played on Dragonshire. She's very, very strong on that map just because she can sort of set up camp yeah. over those those shrines either on top or bottom. Still a decent pick on this map, and maybe they have something up their sleeves. I would love to see it because you guys know me. I'm a huge fan of the Hammer. But uh, after following that, so we have Hammer, Arthas, Abathur, Brightwing. Another Abathur pick coming out of Clairvoyant Gaming. We saw Abathur used to great effect versus EG in round one of this tournament, and... Uh, things look pretty solid there, so why not continue forward? And the teams are jumping right into it. So yeah, okay. Following that up, we have yeah, Abathur Brightwing. Talk, and can't even talk about the trap. The last pick was Uther. If you guys didn't get a chance to see that, oh. so that rounds that out. Okay, so they're ready. Right. They're ready. Okay, so now they got the Brightwing, which yes. is good against the Zebo, and they have yep. stitches. So they have stitches as well. They're going to be looking for those hooks. They're going to be looking for yep. to get pulverized to slam. Yes, of course, of course. To, to use that slam to get the uh, knock that Ravenous mm -hmm. Spirit out. But no, that that's good. It's good you brought that up. We saw Cloud9 Vortex immediately picked up Witch Doctor, so you know that they're sort of going to be building their comp around that. They wanted to secure that early, and you know the, the rest of their pickups. Maybe maybe Hammer is just sort of a way to help zone out for the Ravenous Spirit. You have Arthas, who's just notoriously good at controlling people, making sure that they don't get anywhere near the Witch Doctor while he's channeling. Uther, Divine Storm, all of these things point towards Nazebo having plenty of free time to channel on that Ravenous Spirit. 
So obviously they're feeling very confident in uh actually, you know what? Is it is it Jinte? It's on uh it's gotta be, right? See? Oh, he's actually out today. We have fan, we didn't even talk about that. We have fan subbing in for Jinte, I think, on Tychus, unless that was a roster change that I wasn't aware of. Before we jump into that, let's introduce the teams real quick. For Clairvoyant Gaming, we have Clown on Vala. Rusty will be playing v uh, Brightwing. Atlanta on Stitches. Cattle Pillar on Zeratul. And Spanker will be playing Abathur. I uh, have the map. We have Rarjar. This is Cloud9, of course. Cloud9 yes. Vortex. Rarjar will be playing as Nazebo, Mr. Chef himself. Of Team Liquid, I've uh, been playing a lot with Vortex, so yes, we actually has, don't yep. know his complete story. He'll be playing the yep. Medic Uther. Um, we can see them body blocking all yes. these minions here, saying, stay in your lane, little dudes. Yep. Uh, uh, of course, I dream on the hammer, and of course, Tychus will be played by Fan. Now, what does this body blocking do, Jake? What is this, what is this all about? Uh, it makes the minions get to their lane a little bit later, so that they're on your slower. side. And yeah. it's more beneficial. It's safer to soak your lane. Yeah. At the same Actually, thing. if you look at the bottom lane right now, I think that's where we're probably seeing the most effective. Look oh, yeah. how much slower that is. Like these guys are already in lane yeah. top. And that was a very, very minute change. But uh, Witch Doctor's uh, zombie wall that comes up, that's one of the best abilities in the game for body blocking the creeps. They so have to like path quite a bit around that. So we do see that that pulls the fight a little bit closer to their towers. Just as you know, it's just a small little advantage that your team can take. There's actually nothing else you can do aside from take watchtowers during you know the first 30 seconds of the game or so. Why not body block these creeps just to get them a little bit closer to your side? Just take a bit less risk. You might as well. Ooh, Atlanta going for the hook, but he hits the one minion that has just a little bit of health left right in front of him. And uh, not going to get that hook. Now, looking at the builds here, it's pretty much standard stuff. I mean, across the board, Conjurist Pursuit, very standard. And, uh, oh, wow, and, you know, Roger took a lot of damage, but Kettle Killer is going to get out of here, taking a lot as well. But Atlanta! Wow. No okay, bueno. pretty pretty nice. Uh, we saw Ardream wrap around there and use the Concussive Blast just to make sure that Atlanta was not getting out of that situation. Um, yeah, I think you're, you're right. The the picks so far are pretty, pretty standard so far for the level 1 talents. The only one that is really a contest is, again, we see Rancor coming out of clown on his walla. We saw him do this before. I thought that this meant that he was going to be going towards a mana core type auto attacking build. Uh, he, he did end up taking arsenal, which is the level 4 upgrade, which gives you the extra DPS on the multi-shot. He may end up going another middle of the road build up to see and Rusty taking a lot of damage. Wow. Oh, of course, Close, the uh, no pixie, pixie dust there. He is able to get him out with the speed boost. Very yep. nice. You know, it's just a lot of aggression in that top mm -hmm. lane. It's actually a pretty hard lane for Brightwing to solo. Brightwing, of course, heals up very quickly with her passive healing. Right, right. Um, so it's not a big deal, especially when you can tap well or just hearth back. But the issue is when you're solo laning as Brightwing, you can't hearth back and phase shift immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of a downside to that. Uh, a lot of pressure on this bottom lane with the Dream just sieging up in the middle. Um, we see that Caterpillar comes back here. And actually, I like this. He has the mines there. He saw he saw him coming almost instantly, and he unseized the moment yep. that he entered that bush. Right, so we are at the 2 minute and 30 mark. Uh, anywhere between 2.15 and 2.45, we will see the first tribute spawn. And it looks like as this one is spawning top lane. We did see both teams are sort of applying a lot of pressure to bottom, so there's going to be quite a bit of a rotation going up if uh, either team decides that they want to cap this tribute. And it looks like as though Cloud9 Vortex is going to have the big leg up in taking this. I imagine that Clairvoyant Gaming is going to have wind of this, and they're probably just going to sit back and soak. No, they are actually going to try and contest this. It is four oh. heroes to... Ca can Caterpillar do it? No, we can't. He can't. Chef is able to okay. cap it. Yep. And, uh, nice, fl nice play there from... Uh, Cloud9 Vortex. And so they're not soaking middle lane, they're going to miss a few minions, but it doesn't mean that much. Uh, s levels are pretty much just dead even right now. Yeah. Of course Actually, Cloud9 was able to get back to that middle lane in time for them to be able to soak up the rest of that. So they didn't miss much. A pretty nice hook onto iDream. It's really just going to apply a bit of pressure since there's no one else to around to apply any CCs to finish off that kill. But uh, still a nice hook. No matter the hook, it's excitable. I get excitable. so excited. <laughs> I get so excited when I see Good that. hooks are good hooks. And you know what? We, we've seen Atlanta uh, first game in this tournament versus EG. He was landing a ton of hooks. So again, it wouldn't surprise me to see him grab Gorge again if he's feeling very confident in grabbing uh, people, picking off people out of the fight. So I look forward to that. Well, a lot of pressure in the bottom lane, as always. We see three members almost always here in this lane. Uh, we see the mule is actually yeah, going two down. Two mules for each. Uh, one mule for each team. One, uh, yeah. one on Zebo. Again, that's uh, sort of a contest. Oh, another really nice hook on iDream there. Just applying again a bit of pressure. Um, yeah, so back to the mules. Uh, on Zebo, it's a little bit strange. Uh, sometimes we see people take clairvoyance, but more often than not, we'll see them grab Gidbin. 
which is the ability that it just sort of upgrades all of your basic abilities, so extra duration or damage. This is this is cool. This rotation up on Bobby Hank Kill, we have yeah. Caterpillar, that's gonna be Cloud, a kill and sure. Rusty, and he's just all by himself, and they're just going to blow him up before going for the That's tribute. actually really nice. So they got a uh, oh free 15 goodness. seconds. Oh. Yeah, that would have been... Okay. If the hook wasn't there, he would have had the tribute. So it would have been a, trade, a tribute right. for a hero that's worth it, mm -hmm. but they know without... Arthas, they can't fight this for sure. sure. They have to give it yeah, up. it makes a lot of sense for them to back up. No sense in putting that extra risk on themselves, trying to eke out a kill there when it's very unlikely that it's going to happen. Well, again, I dream just continuing to push. No interest in the tributes at all. Just saying, look, I'm going to get my siege damage as high as I can. <laughs> Let's look at a siege damage here. We can actually see almost 20,000 siege damage already. Not bad. I've done better. Yeah, uh, we're getting close to level Jake. 10 for both teams. Uh, almost 9 here for Cloud9. And, uh, of course, Cloud or Clairvoyant already has 9. Yeah, so we're, we're up at 1-to-1 one -one tributes. Uh, sometimes we see that the team that is down, two tributes may have been soaking a little bit better, and they just hit level 10 just enough so that they can take a huge advantage going to that third tribute. And Cloud is a bit out of position here. Uh, yeah. Perhaps didn't have the Envenom available, or, or maybe the Mortal Coil, sorry. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he didn't have Mortal Coil. Death Coil. Uh, so nicely done, uh, putting a lot of pressure on, forcing him to hearth back, but Rusty is here to soak the lane in his absence. And Fan just going to keep blowing up this middle lane with the Caterpillar just poking and prodding, doing what he can. Mm -hmm. But this bottom lane is still kind of a big story. Now, look how much work Mule has done. This yeah. tower has been pressured and pressured and pressured and pressured, but Mule has mitigated literally yeah, every, sure every ounce of it. Yeah, and we do see, oh, just a bit miss on the hook there, and we do have, yep, Gorge is available. So that actually would have been a death for early Liquid Chef if he had landed that hook for sure. Uh, there's no way he was going to get out of that. And it would have been a really nice way for Clairvoyant Gaming to open up this tribute fight. Uh, as it is, it looks like everyone but Arthas for, okay, yep, Arthas just for, for Cloud9 Vortex is not going to be, or is going to be a little bit late to this tribute fight. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Clairvoyant get a little bit aggressive here until he shows up. Of course, yeah. they don't know that he's exactly missing, so maybe that's why we don't see that. But now, let's just note again, the Abathur on this map is really strong. Yeah. And it's good to see once again. So Abathur is soaking this top lane with Giants pushing yeah. the lane as well. Yeah, you so can see he's pressing out too, right? He's applying a lot of pressure up there. Right. So that top lane is really getting worked on pretty hard. But, oh, a nice wall comes down here for um, from the Nazebo. But they're going to mm -hmm. be able to get the tribute and back it up. Still a hook? Any hooks available? No? Okay. okay. He still has not used his Gorge yet. So any hooks that he can grab, pull somebody over that wall. Roger has to be careful here. Okay, yeah, this is very scary. The allies are close. There it is. There He's it got is. it. That gorge is going to take him over the wall. Or yeah. very, very close. We need to see the rest of the team rotate down to make sure we can scare the kill. The, the rotation there immediately. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, nicely done. Nicely done. Yep. And that's what I was talking about. You got to be. You have to respect the stitches in that situation, especially when it's so close to the wall. There, the rest of your team's not around to make sure that you'd be alive. Look at nice this. Nice play. Eliminating the wall, even just saying, "Look, there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. We're going to clean everything up here." <laughs> uh, they know Avatar is going to be a constant annoyance, and they just want to make sure, sure he has sure. as few places to hide as possible. Yep. So uh, once again, we see Reign of Vengeance on Vala. How do you feel about that over Strafe? You know, looking at their composition, you have to consider that you're both. You have the utility of getting the stun on Nazebo if necessary, mm -hmm. um, and you have to consider that there's just pretty big front line that you might need to be, get away from. Like, as, sure. as Vala, it's it's good for multiple things like okay. that. Strafe's great, but you gotta worry about Polymorph. No, never mind, excuse me. Polymorph's the be right side of your team. There's actually not a lot of interrupts other than Uther for the Suns uh, on Strafe, so... Yeah. I think it's just more they want these close corner gravity. Sure, or no, that makes a lot of sense. Well, a lot of damage we would have. Rusty's gonna fall almost immediately to Vines from trying to uh, secure this fight here. Shet's just gonna throw some heals down as Bobby Hain kills, zones him out. This is gonna be the first curse going down already here uh, for Cloud9. Yeah, they, uh, Clever Wine actually dealt with the Ravenous Spirit fairly early. I just think that the positioning wasn't quite right. Um, we saw that the Vala clone took a lot of damage very early on, and it sort of made Clever Wine a little bit pensive in terms of pressing to take that tribute. So they just opted to give it up, uh, losing only the Bright Wing. Pressing in anymore would have been. Really right, disastrous right. for them. So, well, curses, the curses are bad, but you know you can manage them. But if you lose four people, that's way, way worse. Well, they're looking for the hook, but that wall is going to give so much extra time to zone for, and they're just able to pace it out. And yeah. they knew it was coming. They they fell back and they juke sure, it sure. properly. The parting of the sea, <laughs> the hook, if you will. The worst feeling as the stitches fire. Like, ah, oh, everyone, <laughs> why? What are you doing to me? I look terrible now. But honestly, without that wall, they wouldn't have had that extra time to get ready to you know kind of zone for that. They sure. forced stitches to a Absolutely. weird positioning, mm -hmm. and uh, just really nicely done. Not you. I mean, that's the nice thing about the wall because each little zombie on the wall counts as a unit, so the hook will actually pull one of those oh things. Yes, so yep. it's not just a utility like like roots for Malfurion. Oh right. no, Spanker has been found. <laughs> <He just laughs> I like it. Just goes five feet, but it was enough over the I wall. That's plenty. 
All he needs. Actually stays nearby to make sure that he can continue to defend. I'll I like wall it. through the woods to grab his house we go. <laughs> Not even giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we tried. Geez. Well, the golem has been started here by Clairvoyant, but Cloud9 Maelstrom is right around the corner. Uh, Emerald win and probably used almost immediately, and that's that's horrible. Like Yeah, that's just a straight disengage. They just don't like the situation they're in. Didn't have a good uh, eye into where the rest of the team was. They figured they were going to press a little bit harder to cap that golem. Not the case. But yeah, you're right. That's bad. They, they lose one of their big disengages for right. the fight. Like, that's something that, you know, Cloud9 knows. Okay, we have a leg up. They don't have that heroic polymorph. It's going to be off cooldown by the time they need it now. But at that, that is, you know, exact situation. It's, I believe, a 15 second cooldown, maybe 16. Uh, a lot of damage going down on this this fort. They're going to get the kill here. Uh, they're not going to leave until it falls, that's for sure. The hook goes out, but no dice. Kind of scary, yeah. But even if he got in a hook gorge in that situation, there's no there's no keep, no wall to run them back to. I think they probably would have been able to save whoever got grabbed. They were close enough. So a lot of pressure in this bottom lane. Now, there's only four members, of course. Abathur is the fifth, and he is pushing that top lane with those giants, trying to, you know, keep this fort battle, if you will. Uh, as even as he can. Ravenous Spirit, though, coming from afar. Atlanta immediately runs back and gorges him. Uh, but Atlanta's oh. going to pay for it. He's going to yeah, fall Yeah, I'm not here. sure if that's the right call. Now, Nazebo is at full uh. health here. Emerald Wind was off cooldown at that point because it is quite short. Yeah, I think the better call there was probably just to send... If you didn't like the positioning to get to Nazebo to interrupt this, you sometimes you just have to disengage the fight entirely. Just send Brightwing forward, Emerald Wind, and everyone backs up. Waste the Ravenous Spirit. If you can get out, why not? I think it was just the wrong call to just run up and gorge because you know you're not going to get the kill on Nazebo, but you're going to lose your stitches for sure. Now, the clone Emerald Wind used to push them into their home. Into their home. <laughs> into safety. <laughs> it's like tucking them in tonight. You know, sleep tight. Uh, they're going to be fine. And, of course, this golem is always going to be something that both teams are looking at. Both golems are on the map. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a hard thing to do when you don't have an advantage. You don't have a distraction like a curse on the map. So if we see one taken, it's going to be a really ballsy play, It's going to be a, a cheeky play, yeah. as they cheeky, say. Cheeky, that's a good word. <laughs> it's the best word. All right. So, yeah. Okay, it looks like... It's kind of an odd place to be fighting, to be honest. There's no no tributes or anything. I just think both teams happen to be rotating through mid. And Clairvoyant Gaming might be setting up some kind of party bush. I'm not really sure what they're... You know, that we okay, saw that a right. lot in the other games. We saw That's them party true. bushing constantly against... Uh, I believe it was against both well, both Glorious and EG, but primarily against Glorious. They were doing it a lot. Atlanta and Clown look like they want to go for this. They want to give up this tribute. They know that it's not a crucial tribute in the game. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, you know, they can just cap this and immediately start their golem. Sure. Okay, so level 16 has been hit for both teams. Like you were mentioning, yeah, they're just going to be trading off that tribute for they the goal. They have to know it's being taken, but they're going to be too late. They're going to get there well after it's dead, and it's going to force an initiation. Not necessarily. Oh, the hook goes down to Bobby Hankel. Not really the target you want to I don't know about this. I don't like this gorge, oh, to be but honest this with void you. prison attempt was really good, but look how Marjar has the safety bubble from the enemy team on the right side. They get the kill with the Ravenous. Reign of Vengeance does absolutely yeah. nothing. It, just, it was sort of a zone play. and it, you, you hook the Arthas in that situation, you just got to leave. Like You're not going to kill him. He has, he's got stone skin already. He has, he's got death coil that he can use on himself. He's got army of the dead. He's not going to die. So it's just kind of like a you hook him, just take the loss, and back up. You yeah. know? Now, the Golem gets a fort. So they pretty much throw stitches away four of four in a decent chunk of XP. Uh, but at the same time, there's going to be a golem taken here for Cloud9 yeah. pretty much for free. Yeah, I'd give I'd give solid advantage right now to Cloud9, especially after uh, picking up that kill. And it just sort of looks as though their Clairvoyant is not as comfortable as they were in two previous rounds of this tournament. We'll have to see if they turn things around. Of course, they, they were a little bit shaky in both the early games that we saw, and then they sort of picked up the pace uh, going into the late game. But we're not quite seeing that just yet. And I guess the problem now is there's a fresh tribute spawning, yep. and the golem has just spawned for Cloud9. So right, they right. have a golem on their side. Oh my goodness, but a pickup on wow. that kill. I don't even know what that was about. Yeah, that <laughs> I didn't expect He was very far away from the rest of his team, and of course, he knows there's a tribute nearby. Uh, this is kind of odd. Yeah, that was... That I mean, was you were like, spike. okay, they have a choice. Do they do they cap the tribute or do they clean up the goal? And they're doing both, and Cloud9 Vortex isn't contesting either. They, yeah, they can't. I mean, you lose yeah, you your Tychus. Yeah, you lose your That's So, yeah, well, I mean, just scrap everything I was going to say, I yeah. guess. <laughs> All right, Jake, I got a question for you. How do you feel about Stitches grabbing Fishing Hook over Pulverize? Fishing Hook over Pulverize. 
Well, the Nazebo has actually been doing a lot of work, so I don't like it. Because I, as much as you have the hook and the increased range on the hook, it's it's not as easy as you'd think to get those hooks onto it in the Nazebo. Especially when you can throw the, the zombie, zombie wall, wall yep, to, around to protect yourself. yourself. And we've seen that from Cloud9 Vortex, I think it was. Yeah, they're the ones yeah. that like showed that off to us first in right. a competitive match, so at least. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a surprise. And he, he took slam area increase at level 13. That usually points to taking pulverize just so that you can stun out the entire team or just have that little bit of extra reach just to grab the uh, Ravenous Spirit and just knock him out. Atlanta is looking for the hook. He's seeing what he can do. Just yep. and, getting and vision with Caterpillar yep. here on Zeratul. Zeratul does, in fact, get rooted there. Throws on his Void Prism. But oh my goodness, the Ravenous Spirit is going in and just kind of just... Oh, is it going to be enough to have enough first damage to take down Bobby Hank Hill? The Emerald Wind is pretty nice, but oh God, his sustain is just too much. <laughs> and they spent too many resources trying to kill Bobby Hank Hill there, and they're paying for it dearly. Atlanta's Atlanta. going to go down. Going down, yep. And uh, honestly, that's, that's of course, the clone on the right-hand side there. And I just realized I didn't, didn't turn off my edge screen <laughs> observing. The screen. <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, you know what? I will say uh, props to Bobby right now. He's He's been putting himself in the way of that hook. He's been taking the bullet for the rest of his team. That's why to do it. And, yeah, that's that's the sign of a good a good peeler, I'll a good warrior you, player. When you're playing Arthas and you get hooked into the enemy team, you you're say, like, oh, why, thank you. Happy day. Exactly where <laughs> I would like to be. Just pop my Frozen Tempest here and Army of the Dead, and I'm not going to die. And that was exactly what happened in that last fight. So. He just shouts, well, man, <laughs> while he gets pulled in. <laughs> Suddenly okay. he turns into Uther. Yep. I like it. <laughs> I dream just going to town here on these towers. Once again, 112 siege damage already been done here, but Abathur. Yeah, no surprise there. Keeping yeah. up as well. Abathur just kind of does damage when he's Yeah, considering how, how strong of a position Cloud9 Vortex has put themselves into, they're very close to 20. Uh, structure wise, things are still pretty even. Yep. Uh, we're just down to the forts for, for both teams. Uh, and but hitting level 21st is going to be a big deal. They have three Resurgence of the Storm available to them. Cloud9 Vortex does Ooh. if they choose to grab them. That's the a really really nice Helm Blast. Yep. Caterpillar is just going to get blown up. He, Divine Storm is used. It wasn't even necessary. Shaft is just saying insurance policy. Get out of my game yeah. and just make sure they get that kill on Zeratul because he could have blinked out mm -hmm. at any moment. So well worth using it there. Yeah. No Resurgence taken for Hammer here. She ended up going with the upgraded range and damage on Napalm Strike. You'd think that's that fine for this map, though, considering the harass potential you have for these tributes. Yes, but research is so good. Is so, <laughs> it is and, so good. You know, you're that's right. one of one of Hammer's strengths. Is she's the only mm. quote unquote assassin but that has resurgence right. in the game. I mean, we we saw this out of Clairvoyant, you know, in their game versus Glorious, right? We saw that they had some options to take Resurgence. They opted not to. They were just feeling very confident. They, they had a two-level lead at that point. This yeah. is not as much of a lead, but right, still, but they have the curse yeah. advantage it's right now. It's not a bad. It's not yeah. a bad thing to grab. Um, either way, uh, you know, big a lot of pressure coming out. They don't have 20 yet. Very close to 20 here for Clairvoyant. Right. They need to hit 20 before they initiate here, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Sure. Stall out. The gorge goes down once again, and will it be enough for the kill? The wow, Ravenous they are going to grab the, the kill on Fan immediately. Yeah, but the Ravenous Spirit yeah. is forcing Rusty out here. Rajar is out of position, though. Needs to run Wow, they're out getting here. aggressive. Yeah, and I think it's the right call. Uh, Rajar has fallen. Brightwing's back into the battle here. Atlanta's going to get healed up. Oh, the hook! Not quite, not quite enough. Uh, they're trying, though. Clown forced to blink out. Rusty is pretty much... Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Pretty much nope, is what he says. Yeah. So, yeah, we actually see a bunch of blinks being uh, taken as soon as they hit level 20. Actually, really, really nice hook around the edge of that building there. It's not going to be enough to kill Arthas once again with that ridiculous amount of sustain that he has. But uh, Clairvoyant no. just bought themselves a an opportunity to come back into this game. They, they did. And, of course, with Abathur on the map, pressing all the time... Something you gotta respect. Yeah, I mean, Abathur puts a timer on the game. It He's does. infinite push. It doesn't stop. Yeah. They gotta keep. You know, there is a keep down here, but this keep is gonna be taking yeah. so much damage. They might even get it right here. Yeah. And, and when you have the, the locust brood upgrade for the toxic nest, like that's those things explode. They do AOE damage. They clean up waves so fast. And you can see exactly what Liquid Chef is doing. He's he, hunting around yeah, for the Abathur he wants. He's long yeah. gone. And you know, we, we've seen some some really, really nice play out of Spanker with his Abathur. He rarely gets caught out of position. Actually, I don't in the three games that we've casted him so far, I don't think he's been caught yet. I Yeah. Um, so he's he knows how to move around the lanes to apply aggressive pressure, but still stay safe at the same time. So yeah, props to him for doing that. Golem's taken on both sides of the map. Knights as well here for... Oh, never mind. That was Knights, not Golem, uh, on the side of Cloud9. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really nicely yeah. done. Now, if we look, there's actually... Oh, no do we have a potential for a steal? Hold on, Jake. 
He, he so knows he what's going on there. Yeah, yeah he, they do know he's there, so they're going to they're take scared. this a little bit. So this is by time for Clairvoyant Gaming to get up here to contest this. Oh, he's coming from back. He's coming from the back there. What he can do is he can throw the Void Prison down mm. when the Golem dies. But he has oh. no vision of it, though. That's the problem. He has to guess when the... the it's, oh, God, this is so tense. They know exactly what he's trying to do, but... He's going in! He's going in! He doesn't, oh, he doesn't, he doesn't I get hope it. I was Really, just it would have been so cringy if he just like threw it down right after the cap. Just like, no, you're oh, just, well, he's, he's got to do it to get out of there. He's That's do it fine. To get out, but does he still get out? They're, they're hunting, they have vision. Wow, Chef knew, their knows exactly what he's trying to do. Pacing he's around, skirting the edge, pacing around. He's going down the bottom lane. Very smart, very mm -hmm. smart. Yeah, while this is bottom. going on, they have the bottom bottom goal and taken from Clairvoyant Gaming here. It's still pushing forward. Nice attempt, Caterpillar. It would have been would have been pretty sexy. If we got believed, that. we <laughs> believed, and you failed us. Honestly, though, if he had stolen that. That would have put Clairvoyant Gaming in a huge, huge advantage because yep. they would have had Golems pushing from either side, one of them going right to the core. That would have been awful for Cloud9 Vortex. Ooh, and a best of one, sometimes those single plays right there can make or break the game. That's what makes your team advance towards the finals. So, you know, it was a good attempt, and he didn't die in the process. He did, yes, he burned his, his Void Prison, but I think it was the right call. Yeah, and it's got another 50 seconds on the cooldown. That's the only heroic that's on cooldown yep. for this tribute fight, and it's it's a crucial tribute for Clairvoyant. They want to get that. Oh curse. my God! Wow! I that was an amazing talk right now. They did enough the though. Yeah, they're gonna get they're gonna get I dream, but did they take too much damage in the process? You know, yeah, Rusty backing on up here. Uh, Liquid Chef is very low as well. Spanker coming from behind, throwing everything oh he look. has down. Ravenous Spear, or excuse me, Rain of Vengeance, uh, doing a lot of damage. Chef, though, is going to be able to heal up if they don't kill him soon. Uh, oh, the defensive bolt for it out of Atlanta. I don't know if I've ever seen that happen. Like, that's not something you consider wow. being a, an option. Atlanta <laughs> making some nice plays again with the, the Blink Slam just to secure the kill. It was a oh. really, really nice hook, and he got the target he wanted. That's like... The target, if you get hook gorge, it's like GG, throw you know, drop the keyboard, you're done. This you're not getting out of there. Wow. Bottom bottom keep is is uh, getting healed up right now. Mm -hmm. They want to put the pressure on if they can. Yeah, they see it's vulnerable. Vortex knows this. They're getting down and they're posturing themselves to defend this position. Rusty doesn't look like he has bribe stacks available. Uh, we can see uh, that's actually his bolt. We actually can't see bribe stacks in this UI. No. Learn something new we'll today. We'll have to let Ollie know. I'm sure he can implement it. He's very good with these things. But that said, we're going to see some pressure coming out of Clairvoyant Gaming on this bottom. Bottom fort here. Keep, sorry. And actually, while this is going on, Abathur is securing that mid lane with those Tossic Nests, and he's got it right now. So all they have left is these two keeps. Spanker, so spanking that. Bringing a the tower. <laughs> Slapping him up. I like it. <laughs> and uh, the hook goes down on Rarjar. He's going to throw Gorge down immediately. Wow, Rain really of nice. To secure the kill. Yes, Rain of Vengeance is there with Emerald. Did Rain you see that Void Prison? They grabbed out all three, and that's such a classic strategy. Liquid Sheth is going to fall here. There's no way that the rest of Cloudman Vortex can chase to save him. Oh, the, the insurance policy hook. Yeah, okay, so that's this is a strategy that we would see it was like really common maybe about two months ago. Yeah. And it was either SMG or Glorious that was making it really popular, but basically you would land a, a really nice hook from a very far away, and then you have Zero Tools, Void Prison, ready to go. As soon as the other team starts chasing to oh see the rest of them, I really nice hook. It's not going to be killed. I yeah. can get out. I, but these hooks are like so real coming out of yeah, the lineup. We he's, saw he's the ban last game because they were afraid. And yeah. just so much power coming out of the stitches. Clown is going to fall here. Oh, did they get too aggressive? Oh my goodness, the shield is keeping away him so alive. Much. What? How is he alive? How is he living? Caterpillar bolts out at the last possible second using his blink. Oh, the this is so frustrating for Vortex. Wow! And Atlanta's just going to hook him, just say, look, I'm going to displace you so yeah. my teammates can get out of here, and then I'm just going to catch him. He does have blink away. available. Yeah, we can see that. It's actually really nice to be able to look at those yeah. types of cooldowns. Um, wow. I just. I <laughs> how did no one die there? They're so close. Clairvoyant is making a statement. Yeah, they're, they're saying, look, guys, they work, they're we're playing here well to play so far. With the best. We want this grand yeah. finals this week. We were talking about their late game. They're showing it. We were saying, yeah, well, 17. We're like, we're not seeing it yet. This is it. This it's is what we were talking about, guys. They have such good game sense when it comes to the late game, and they make the plays. I mean, if we looked at the game about five minutes ago, it yeah. was they were at their doorstep pushing down this keep. Now why are and they waiting? Hold on. What's this about? They don't want to give away their position. Yeah, that, that's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. They just don't want to give away their position. They want to see the positioning of the other team. Yes, they okay. see. Okay, they're there. Let's grab it. And uh, they know their boss is up in 10 seconds. There is another 43 seconds here 
on that boss. Yeah, we're going to see another teams. engagement, yeah. Now, full vision here for Clairvoyant. I don't know where they are. Again? Again? Are you I serious? Gorge. Now, will they use Polly or Rain of Vengeance to secure this? They're going to be using uh, Rain of Vengeance to secure the kill. I Dream's going to fall. Void Prison going down to stall that Ravenous Spirit out just for a minute, but here the damage continues. Liquid Chef has been polymorphed. Emerald Wind going down to keep Bobby Hankel pushed back. Roger throwing out the grenade from the extra damage. Atlanta's going to be just fine, though. Hankel has got to be careful. Will the hook I be I think they should out? back up. I mean, they got the kill. They don't need to press anymore, I, don't, I think. Yeah, the, the Abther clone is now gone, so. Oh no. Okay. Whew. What? These hooks, they just they, don't Yeah, stop. He's, he's landed, what, three or four hooks in a row now onto, onto the hammer? Like, really nice. He wasn't getting the best hooks early in the game. He was continually picking the Arthas, but, jeez, he just knows. He just he's got that magnet hook. I love it. And, you know, their lanes are just, they, they got to be careful all the time. They've got these catapults pushing in the top lane. Bottom lane, they're keeping it clear the best they can. Of we course, that keep is pretty low. No one's contesting the tribute just yet because the golem is being picked up here by Clairvoyant. And in the meantime, it looks like Cloud9 is going to go for their golem. The thing is, if they don't have all five members taking mm -hmm. this golem, right. there's a chance they can rotate up to the sure, golem. Sure. But with, with Atlanta Hard thing, that's pretty unlikely. They might be able to stall it long enough, and yeah, of course, there is no Void Prison available. We still have another 30 seconds to wait for that, so we can't see any cheeky steals. But, Clairvoyant's going to be able to put a lot of pressure, and I imagine they're going to be able to get this bottom keep out of it. They're going to be there ahead of time. They're going to have the, the preemptiveness. They have the, the Toxic Nest going down. That's a ton of extra damage, extra siege damage. It's going to go down for sure. Wow. So Cloud9's hard thing back here. This keep, in, like you said, going down ahead of time. Sure, sure. not even here yet. Right. Now he has free reign on the core. They can just back up, take the Giants if they want to, but no, they're going to push on in with it. Does Atlanta secure another really nice hook? He's looking for it. He's looking for it. Fan is a That's prime it. target! That's and he, he tries to dash for it. Okay, he does dash for it. He did have Gorge available. He down. must have mistimed it or just yeah. decided he didn't want to grab it there. Either's Either fine. They should just back up right now. Perhaps we even see Void Prison to secure the safety. Yep, there it is. And just to make sure that the team gets out alive. Ooh, Spanker! Spanker. <laughs> little, uh... <laughs> he's like, oh, oh, nope. he's like, I want to be here, guys. <laughs> I can contribute, trust me. A whole lot of nope. And uh, we can look at the talents here once again, just making sure, you know, we have the double resurgence available here yeah. for Cloud9. So it's the one thing they do have going for them. If they do lose two members, they're back up immediately. Right. That's one thing that Cl Clairvoyant doesn't have. Right. So yeah. in the effect of a big trade, the upper hand is going to go to Cloud9. Sure. And while all this was going on, there actually is a, a golem pushing. What? Oh my Am I watching? Atlanta, you crazy? How do you do this every time? They must be yelling at IG like, "Stop getting hooked, please!" <laughs> like, oh my God, Atlanta's just saying, "Get out of my game!" Oh wow, that's how many times in a row now he's he's landed. He's so good with these hooks. It's like some of the best stitches play I've seen in a vision? long time. Do they even have vision? No, I don't think he did. He's just Zeratul like wasn't over there. Oh, whoa, Abathur died. Wait, they, are, catch they are clairvoyant gaming, am, aren't they? Oh, no, please. Wait, wait, wait. Not. <laughs> well, Abathur died at some point. Okay, okay, Abathur died. I'm I was too sure. busy getting hyped. What is that hook. push, though? God, that looks disgusting on the minimap. Do you see this on the top lane here? What is that? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of stuff. That is a lot of stuff. <laughs> 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 All right, looks like we might more. have a bit of a fight uh, percolating here in the mid lane. Percolating. Yes. I would like to buy a percolator and make coffee with it. And what will that get you? Delicious coffee. Delicious coffee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Cloud9 is <laughs> moving in through the bottom of the map. They do not have Hammer with them. They're trying to party bush here, taking some uh, pages out of the Clairvoyant book. How? But it doesn't matter. Atlanta says, eh, they might be there. And this guy. Every time. It was it was good for them to obviously put Arthas in front in that situation. But do they get him to pop his... his uh, yeah, they yeah, do. There it is. Armor of the Dead is used. Odin will, might need to be used as well. The uh, actual Void Prison used working against him, putting Rusty in there in that moment. Emerald Wind forced out as well. And Reign of Vengeance is absolutely nothing. So pretty unfortunate for... Atlanta Void setting up for a hook. Time. He's Who looking for it. He's looking for it. Rajar or Sheth would be okay targets here. They don't know where but Hammer is. Fan is super out of position. How did this happen? Well, Fan was putting on the pressure while his team yep. rotated around the back. Liquid Chef getting the okay. divine storm that he really needed. Nice is this is this the turnaround point for Vortex? It might be. They could try to end the game here. Remember, they have two resurgence available. Caterpillar is going to fall. That is, in fact, the Abathur clone. Uh, Chef quite low, but he yeah. is Uther, and that, that doesn't mean That is their anything. sustain, though. They took yeah. out the Brightwing. This is kind of a big deal. Really, really nice hook onto Liquid Chef here. 
Is does it gonna have be resurgence? Does yes, he, he does. He does have resurgence. Okay. So not a huge deal. They are going to be able to get this keep. And this uh, sort of evens things out a little bit for Cloud9 Vortex. They're going to continue applying pressure. Yep, so the levels are 25 to 25, dead even here. They want to put the pressure on, like you said. I don't know if they can do it. Brightwing's the only one down for another 35 seconds. A death goes here on Tychus and the Zebo, and it looks like they overstayed their welcome. They are going to pay the price with three members. Yeah. I dream, can you get out of here? Oh, just wow, he's, that's, he's, that's going to be I, it. Yeah. Clown gets out with the blink once again. And that's three people down for over 50 seconds. Everyone should just heal up. I don't see why they can't push in here and just take out. I mean, there's already a ton of pressure being applied from the Abathur in the top lane. This is all but guaranteed here. It's too They're going to have to make they a They should have got the keeping backed up. I, hmm. I, I mean, look at look at the death timers right now. It's yeah, that's, that's huge. Uh, they did, I mean, they had the two resurgence on Uther and Arthas, but I don't think that's going to be enough for them to defend this. They have the sustain from from Rusty here on Brightwing. Oh, no, he's, he looked for it. He, he I mean, it's not even really needed at this point. That'd be nice, and it would really secure. But I, I think this is all but over. I mean, you're you're not wrong. That's <laughs> for sure, because a lot of damage going down on this core with every single member doing what they can. The rain yep. event just try to secure Rusty's life, but not going to happen here. The, the uh, wow. Okay, not the quite positioned properly. They were able to, but that's that's going to be it. Yeah, that's and it. Clairvoyant Gaming. Moving on, once again, another upset from these guys. They're playing so well today. 16 kills to 12. Atlanta. Yeah, it was a close game. It really was. It was such a close game up until, like, you know, around, like, level 18 or so. Clairvoyant Gaming just turned it on, and they were like, we're doing this. We're going. And, and they were making really nice plays, like, really, really good plays, like, here and there. Good hooks, gorgeous, everything. Everything was perfect. Like, they were just securing all the team fights. Every team fight just started up with a 4v5 in their favor. Really, really nice play coming out of Atlanta there. And everyone else was playing solid, too. No no discredit right, to them, right. too. No, I just didn't see any mistakes coming out of them. No, that's the thing. It was just very consistent play. Yeah. And every time Atlanta got a hook, the team came and rotated. Yeah, properly. they were ready the for it. The second it was there, it's like, I got it. They would turn around. Mm -hmm. If they were going the other way, they would turn around and right. respond instantaneously. Brightwing, super on point using face shift, getting across the map, saving people's lives with those clutch polymorphs and just the last, last right. many heals. Just really, really well done. And, of course, the Abathur just... Not not really being in opposition yep. ever. I think he died once. Yep. And you know, Zeratul making really good void prisons, like just yeah. to lock out the rest of the enemy team. We saw that. But you know, two or three times it's really good plays to follow up those hooks and gorges. At the same time though, I mean, uh I wanna say like I dream Getting hooked a lot, not necessarily his fault. A lot of the hooks were blind, and it's just yeah, like... What, you can't really know that that's going to happen. That's I mean. fortunate. Ravenous Spirit did a lot of work. They didn't really have an answer for it, but they kind of got around it just by kind of walking away and hoping Emerald, the yeah, right wing's healing was enough and Emerald win to displace the other members. Because as much as Ravenous does, you kind of rely on other damage going down with it. Mm. Um, but, you know, in the end, I think the, the moral of the story, I guess like one of the big final like nails in the coffin was just Cloud9 staying a little bit too long when they took the middle keep out. Yeah, that, that did hurt. They, they found themselves in a good position at the very, very late game there. And you're right, they could have just taken that keep. And that would have left one keep for Clairvoyant Gaming. And that would have put them at an advantage. And they could have, you know, just backed up, taken some other objectives in the map. I just right. think it was the wrong call. Even though if they had the two resurgence, it was still the wrong call to push in to try and take the keep there. If, that, if that's what they were going for, it seemed like kind of a... Half-hearted attempt. I don't to think do they it. got the keep down to even or the core down to even eighty percent. Yeah, like it was, it's like it was a bit questionable. I mean, yeah, resurgence is nice, but like they still have to. They have the five-second you know uh, timer, the death timer, and they still have to walk all the way across the map. It's not like bright when you can't just teleport over there. So, uh, just yeah, that, that was a questionable decision for sure. And that you're right, that was the nail in the coffin for that game. And we just saw Clairvoyant march right across the map and. Uh, kudos to them. I think they're finding themselves in the first finals for the uh, Go4 Heroes America's Cup so far. So, yeah, congrats. And uh, thanks to Cloud9 Vortex for coming out and competing today. You guys uh, showed some really, really solid play. We hope to see you guys in the future. And I think with that, we'll go to a quick commercial break. Well, well before we do that, oh. we actually do know our grand final, which is ah, what we will be casting. Yes. And it's, it's going to be Clairvoyant versus Symbio Gaming. Ooh. So we are going to throw to a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we'll be casting a best of three finals between between uh, Clairvoyant and Symbio Gaming. This is, is the first finals I've cast with Clairvoyant in it. Yeah. Of course, we've seen Symbio time and time and time again. Right. Will Clairvoyant be able to challenge the Titans, that RSMG, in a best of three? We'll find out in just a minute. Yeah. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> 